To import a CSV file into a Supabase table, first you want to go to the project you're wanting to work in, then select the table editor and create a new table. Give the table a name. I'll just use popular LLMs for this example. Optionally, you can give it a description and then come down here to this button that says import data from CSV. And I have my file right here, so I'll drag this over. Now, if you open up the configure import data, it'll show you the columns that it's importing. You can deselect these if you don't want them. And here's a quick preview showing that it has uh, properly read the file. So we'll hit save. And now we're getting this warning that says no primary key is selected. A primary key is just a unique key that's used for referencing things. We're going to use the name column in our case. Now we're good there. We can hit save. It's going to create the table, add the columns, add the rows. And there we go. We have our CSV file. Now, if you're wanting to export a CSV from Subabase, come over here to the table in the table editor, click the three dots, export data, export table as CSV. It'll give you the option to name it where you want to save it to, click save, and you've exported a CSV. Now, let's say you're not wanting to create a new table from a CSV file, but instead update an existing table with new rows from a CSV file. I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So I've created a couple of CSV files here to look at. The first one has the existing rows in the database plus some new ones down here at the bottom. And then the second CSV file just has the new rows, but not with the existing rows. And I'm going to show you why that's important in a second. So if we come back here to our table, we can click insert import data from CSV. And first I'll do it the correct way and then I'll do it the other way to show you what happens. So this is the CSV file with just the new rows here and I'll click import data and it's gonna successfully import those five rows of data in here. That's the correct way to do this. Now I'll show you what would happen if you tried to do everything else because it's not actually gonna break everything. Um, if we tried to drag this over and import a CSV file that we've updated with additional rows, then when we go to import that, it's gonna throw an error here because it's gonna tell us that the, the name constraint has already been found. So it can't actually add those uh, the, it can't upload the CSV file because existing records with those same names already exist. So I just wanted to show you what happens if you try to do it the wrong way there. But um, if we come in here, we can sort by release year, and this will um, show us. Hang on, sorry. Uh, we sort by release year, and then we can see that the five new rows of models that were created in 2024 have been added. So there you go. If you have an existing table and you want to import CSV, just go to imp insert import data from CSV and remember to only do the new rows that you're wanting to add. And then again, if you want to export, just come over here, export data, export table as CSV. Now, if you're trying to move data back and forth between apps or you're just wanting to create an admin panel for your Supabase backend, I recommend checking out WhaleSync. WhaleSync is a simple no-code way to connect Airtable, Notion, Google Sheets, and other tools like this directly to your Supabase database. So any changes you make in Airtable will be reflected in Supabase, and any changes that your app makes in Supabase will also be reflected in Airtable. So definitely check that out if that's something that you're interested in.